Welcome back, watch fans. Today we're talking about the Piaget Polo, the relaunch. This is the this is the watch that all the window lickers, the tomato cans, uh, and the crayon eaters are going crazy for uh, on the internet today. Here's a little article from uh, Watch Pro. You know, the, this is the uh, you know, official propaganda for the media. Uh, what do I think of this watch? What does the, the colonel think of this watch? But first, on the wrist, we have the Patek Philippe Travel Time uh, 5327. Wait, I can't keep these references uh, in, in uh, you know, keep track of these references. But yeah, unbelievable classic. Uh, you know, big size, like a 38 millimeter, actually, a 37 millimeter. Uh, beautiful modern Patek uh, Travel Time. You get a dual time complication. Uh, manual wind, unbelievable watch, and you know, under 20 grand today versus this. Piece of shit, which is, I think, 80 grand plus, if I'm doing the math correctly. Now, let me explain to you what I don't like about the watch. Um, look, Piaget, you know, look, we all respect, I think, Piaget for, you know, historically, you know, thin watches, et cetera, et cetera. You know, great movements, you know, innovation, uh, you know, the jewelry, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the beautiful dials. Now, this thing was avant-garde in 1979 or 78 when it launched in the 70s this would have been like the thing right and um you know interestingly i, I was look, reading this article and i love by the way i love i love these old ads i love these you know this is back in the day when when advertising when they actually had like a long copy this was a full page ad like i don't know this would have been a full page magazine ad in time magazine or you know the new yorker or wherever at forbes and, um, you know, they had a full page ad and they said at the bottom, you know, it said, send away for brochure, send $2 to Piaget department, you know, 650 Fifth Avenue. And actually, I, uh, I remember uh, working at that building. Uh, well, not, I didn't quite have a job that was kind of hanging out at somebody's office, getting free, free office space or trying to get free office space. And that was an amazing building. It was amazing. 650 Fifth Avenue. Um, and it was actually called the Piaget building back, this is like in the mid-90s, uh, it was the Piaget building, originally owned by the, the Shah of Iran, I think owned it, um, Ivan Boski, does anybody remember Ivan Boski? Ivan Boski, his office was in that building, so a lot of heavy hitters were in that building, I mean, not when I was there, that was, he was before my time, but, uh, so we get here, here's the Piaget collection, now, what do I hate about this watch? Um, look, this is, this would have been equivalent to kind of the Royal Oak, right? This was basically a knockoff. I don't want to say a knockoff, but this was highly inspired by uh, the the Royal Oak, the Nautilus, all that stuff. Obviously, it did it in a round watch, so it basically took that whole design concept uh, and they brought it to this, you know, form. And this is, again, very innovative. Um, and, uh, yeah, this was kind of the hot watch, but it was a fashion watch, okay? It wasn't really taken seriously. It was a fashion watch. It was the hot watch. And yes, you know, they're all playing off this thing. Oh, Andy Warhol had one. Andy Warhol or this. First of all, Andy Warhol was not really a watch collector. He was not a watch connoisseur. Did Andy Warhol have a hundred watches? Yeah, the guy was a hoarder. He he also collected cookie jars, okay? He collected all sorts of stuff. He he just bought random stuff at flea markets. That's what he would do. He'd go to a flea market. You know, Saturday, Sunday morning, uh, I think they were all on 6th Avenue at the time. And he would just buy random shit uh, that he could get for free. And by the way, that was the golden age. Uh, this is before my time, okay? I'm not that old. But, you know, the 70s and 80s uh, was the golden age of watch collecting. Because that's, you know, I'll get into that in a whole different story. But, yeah, there was a lot of watches available. And they were cheap because people weren't buying it. Uh, but yeah, he wore it. So did a lot of other people. I think you, you, you see pictures of, you know, Valentino or whoever. All the, you know, the high rollers, the jet set was wearing this watch. But what is the problem? What's the problem? It's a bastard. This is a bastard watch. Uh, it is not fit uh, to be the king. That's right. You know, like, uh, you know, generally speaking, in uh, with royalty, you know, they don't let a illegitimate son, you know, a son born out of... Uh, uh, wedlock or incest or whatever, you know, an affair, uh, you know, ascend to the throne, right? That's probably why the that uh, 
was the William or what's the redheaded guy from uh, the British guy? Uh, I don't know the guy. He might be. He might not be legitimate, right? Well, supposedly he's the second son, but whatever. But you know the 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 thing is, you don't you know the generally for you know all of human history, the illegitimate son does not become a uh, king. Now, what is illegitimate about this watch? The DNA, it's got bastard DNA. It was originally a quartz watch. It was a quartz, a quartz shitter. That's right. These guys sold out. Piaget was a sellout to the quartz, you know, to the quartz world. And uh, this was a, a quartz watch. They were all made in quartz. And now, you know, they're doing, uh, they're making this, uh, you know, with a beautiful movement, you know, whatever, automatic, you know, look at this. It's, you know, very nice, whatever. And like, you know, um, I just can't take it seriously. Again, I'm not a, I'm not like a watch snob, uh, but uh, you know, I, 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 to me, something about it just it doesn't pass the smell test. This watch to me also, it looks dated at the same time. To me, this watch, it's almost like I bet if you open the the case that it comes in, it smells like a like a Commodore 64. Did anybody remember that? Remember the computers? You bought a computer. In the 80s, you open it up, it had that smell. I don't know what that smell was. It's sort of like this kind of plastic or uh, electronic smell. There was a, 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 the electronics of that era smelled. It was a scent. I'm not a, not a bad one. I, I really love that smell. You know, the Commodore 64, you know, everybody had a Commodore 64 uh, in the 80s. You know, that was the thing. You know, and of course, you know, everybody convince the parents, oh yeah, this would be for education. <laughs> no, we all use it to play video games, okay? The early video games. Um, and uh, yeah, my favorite one is F-15 Flight Eagle. And I remember you could get these games pirated at a, at a guy who pirated these games and the big floppy drives. But yeah, there was a smell. Remember remember how the five and a quarter inch floppy disk, how they smelled? Into the 90s, you know, the, the, then they became smaller. I don't know what the, what the size was, the, the three and a quarter, whatever it was. But they all had this scent, and that's what this watch smells like. It smells like a floppy disk. It doesn't smell like Teen Spirit. It smells like, uh, you know, uh, Windows, uh, not 95, not Windows 95. It smells like a Commodore 64. That's what this thing smells like. Uh, do not be a sucker. Don't be a lollipop eater. This is a piece of shit. Uh, I think they're asking 80 grand for this or something crazy, insane, insane. That is insane. Don't be a crayon eater or a tomato can. Uh, this is going to be garbage, and this will um, be selling in the, you know, traditionally the gray market, you know. The gray market was basically a place where retailers would offload stuff they couldn't sell, and that's where it would sell at a discount, you know, 30%, 40% off, 80% off. Uh, look, would you rather get a Patek Philippe travel time? You got do two time zones, okay? I got my local time with the gold hand, and I got that the ghost hand. That's Paris time, baby, right? And by the way, I got it. Yes, it has sweeping seconds. Manual wind. I love the manual wind. You know, it gives me a good feeling. And of course, we have the Jean Rousseau shark screen. Excuse me, shark skin. Shark skin, shark skin strap in green. Um, gold and green, always a good look. Now, again, uh, I got... It's a dark day. I don't have lights on here, so it's a little bit... Whatever. But guys, don't be, don't be tomato cans. This is garbage. Uh, don't be sucked into all the hype that these guys are trying to spruik. It's almost like, you know, the Hodinky guy, the grifter, sending out those stupid G-Shocks. He's sending out his G-Shocks like, oh, it's a historic stuff. He's, he's sending out G-Shocks in a, in a fake Nautilus, uh, you know, a cork box. This guy's so original. It's a piece of shit watch. And, you know, he's, yeah, all these, all these grifters on um, these alleged influencers on Instagram, they're all like, you know, they got to toe the line. They say, oh, this is magnificent. Oh, it's a, it's wonderful. Oh, Ben, you're such a genius. <laughs> you know, all these, all these um, window lickers on Instagram. That's right. You see, you see these, these, these low life degenerates, uh, you know, all, all kind of trying to suck up to uh, this, this loser. Uh, anyway, guys, don't get, don't get scammed. This is garbage.